Hello and welcome back to the Life After Losses video blog. Now last week I rambled incoherently about tending our emotional wounds, which included self-sabotaging thoughts about ourselves. Um, and I, as I tend to do, I uh, introduced something toward the end about using the word yet, which reminded me of a topic that I'd been wanting to share for a while, but was otherwise distracted by a new book release. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about yet. In this entry, number 178, called Not Dead Yet. I am drawn to stories about life and death, the fictional ones, not the true crime stories. Movies like Somewhere in Time and Ghost, or TV shows like Six Feet Under and Death Dead Like Me. And I recently ran across a TV show on one of the streaming services that I binged called Not Dead Yet. And two things. One, it just struck me as a, an extension of last week's blog entry where I actually encouraged you to use the word yet. And two, it's a quirky comedy about a writer who sees dead people. Uh, for some reason, the protagonist, Nell, can see and converse with the people she's assigned to write an obituary about. And that's where the charm came in. Each spirit taught her a lesson about living her own life as she was trying to rebuild her, rebuild her life. Now, the first season was arguably better on that premise, which may be the reason it was canceled after two seasons. But that's beside the point of what I, what I really wanted to share. First of all, the yet word. I feel this is a really powerful word, and, and as I mentioned all too briefly last week, it implies you're not done with life, even if sometimes it feels like it. Especially in the context of the show's title, you're not dead yet. And neither am I, which is why I'm compelled to keep writing and sharing my story that life after losses is absolutely possible when you decide to live it. And as you know, that time when we make that decision is personal to each of us. And some may choose not to decide for them years, if ever. And, you know, I have no choice but to respect that person's choice. But if it's not a choice and if it's just a default state, I would challenge that person to examine if it's just depression or apathy docking. I like to believe that being happy should be our default state. Though sometimes it's interrupted by life's harsher moments. And in those moments of harshness, lessons are learned. I found that the most important lessons I learned were through pain and hardship. Those lessons challenged me to be stronger and to learn how to cope, whether those events were caused by my own failure, work situations that became difficult, the deaths of my husbands, or even raising kids by myself. None of those were easy, but I had to figure it out. And one thing that helped me do that was time. If I didn't have to have an answer immediately, I could always say, I don't know how to solve this yet. And then I challenge myself to do so. I'd lean on people I know and trust and seek their advice. And nowadays we have a wealth of information at the end of an internet connection. But that's not always easy to interpret. I mean, there's so much conflicting information out there. And so I have to rely on my intuition and my inner guidance. And no, that doesn't always work either. Lessons learned. So uh, the second thing the show made me think about is the life lessons we learn from loss. Now, Le Nell learned about the regrets and lives lived of the people that she wrote about and applied those lessons to her own life, only more so in the first season. And I've learned not to take life for granted, that experiences are more important than things and that relationships are more important than I realized. And never to let someone I know that I care about not know it I learned that photos of people are more important than photos of landscapes or architecture, and that someday may never come, and has to be today. I've learned remembering the sounds of their voices is, is one of the first things to go, so I have recordings now of those I love. Yeah, you know, the new book has a section on grief being a teacher, but it's not the only teacher. Life itself is a teacher. Each challenge, each loss, each memory, they're all teachers giving us lessons to shape who we are and who we are becoming. Combining those lessons with the word yet, I see potential and hope for what we can become. We're not defined by our losses. I believe we can define ourselves by what we do with those lessons and the time we have to solve the yet. Yeah, I'm not dead yet, and neither are you. 
What are you doing with your yet? You know what I'm doing with mine. Till next time.